Hello again, and welcome back to episode three of the SDC Survival Series. I hope last week you had a lot of fun making your shelters, and in today's episode, we're going to be looking at navigation and compasses, and in particular, how you can make your own compass at home. Whether your interests lie in reaching one of the world's remote destinations, tackling your first Duke of Edinburgh award, or simply enjoying a day's walk in the hills, True freedom and safety outdoors relies on a proficiency in navigation. Throughout my time in the military, there was always a big emphasis on navigation and understanding how it worked. In recent times, GPS systems like the one on my wrist now have come on leaps and bounds. However, it's important never to rely fully on technology. The most popular tool nowadays to determine north and the degrees of the azimuth is a magnetic compass. They're cheap, they're dependable, they're durable, and they require no source of power. However, there may come a time when you find yourself with a lost or broken compass. And this is where we can make use of what is known as celestial navigation. This form of navigation is based on the Earth's constant and predictable relationship with the sun and we're going to take a look at a few of those methods now. The first method we're going to go over is called the sundial method. Now the first thing you need to know is no matter what hemisphere you're in, the sun always rises in the east and will set in the west. Now there's some seasonal variation to this, and the closer we get to the equator, the more accurate it's going to be, but it's accurate enough for us to get our bearing. In the northern hemisphere, this shadow will move clockwise. In the southern hemisphere, it's going to move anti-clockwise. Now the shadow movement is what's going to allow us to work out both the time of day and the direction. To begin, first you need to place a long piece of wood into a clear open space. You need to make sure the area you've chosen isn't covered by any trees so that the sunlight can get through. You want your piece of wood to be roughly a metre long or about three foot, long enough to make a nice clear shadow. Now the first thing we're going to do is find the end of the shadow and we're going to mark it. You can do this with rocks, pebbles, or as I'm going to do, is insert another piece of wood into the ground. So I'm going to follow it along to the end. Put it in. Now we need to wait. Now I've waited for approximately two hours. And as you can see, the shadows moved in a clockwise direction indicating that I'm in the Northern Hemisphere. Now, unless you're really lost, then knowing what hemisphere you're in shouldn't really come as much as a surprise. Now, to help us find our cardinal directions, we're gonna to need to mark where the shadow has moved to. We're gonna do this in exactly the same way as we did before. Now that we've marked it up, we're going to connect these two points together, which I'm going to use a separate piece of stick. So, laying it down between two points. Now that we know that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, we can apply that to our sundial. The first shadow indicates the west. The second shadow indicates the east. So, Simply by knowing our north, east, south and west, we can quickly fill in the rest of what is our temporary compass. So, with a second piece of wood, I'm gonna lay that perpendicular with our first piece. Now, if this is west, this is east, we know that we have north, east, south, and west, making north that direction. Now one way to remind us of this is we like to make a little arrow 
northwards. And that's our completed compass. Now the next method we're going to use only requires a needle, a leaf and a body of water. In this case I filled up a kitchen bowl. Now it's important to make sure the bowl we use is non-metallic because the metal will affect the result. Magnetic compasses work based on the Earth's magnetic field. Magnetism is the reason that two magnets will pull away from each other or push together. But magnetism can also help us to navigate. Because the Earth has a magnetic field, compasses can be made using a small bar or needle that when magnetised will point north. First, we need to fill up our bowl with water. Secondly, we need to get outside and collect our leaf. This is what's going to allow the needle to rotate freely. Lastly, but most importantly, we need to magnetise our needle. Now the best way to do this is by rubbing it along the side of a magnet. However, if like me, you don't have a magnet to hand, we can use our hair, we can use our jeans. In fact, we can use anything where we can create some sort of static. So let's give that a go now. You'll notice the way I'm rubbing it is in one direction, which is important. So if we do it on our hair or along the side of our jeans, We'll move it in the same direction. Now, to demonstrate it working, I've used a GPS on my watch to mark out north. I put my leaf ready in the bowl. I'm now going to take my magnetized needle. I'm going to place it onto my leaf. And although the Earth's magnetic field is relatively weak, we'll still be able to clearly see it affecting the needle as it rotates clockwise round to our northern pointing arrow. And once it stopped moving, the needle would have aligned itself along the Earth's magnetic field. And there we have it. We've got a north, south, east and west. Time for you to have a go at home.